Dr. Garassi, I present Romy Cohen for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. <laughs> Trustee Mark Leibovitz and faculty member Dr. Lori Weintraub will assist with placing the hood on the shoulders of Romy Cohen. Romy Cohen was born in Bratislava, Czechoslovakia in 1929. He was only 10 years old when, in 1938, the Germans invaded Czechoslovakia and began a mass deportation of Jews. World War II and the Holocaust were at hand. Although at first his family was granted an exception from deportation and Romy was allowed to stay in his country, the reprieve was brief. For as the war progressed, it became more and more dangerous to stay in Czechoslovakia, and young Romy, then 13, was smuggled across the border and into Hungary. But there would be no safety for the teenager. Unable to speak Hungarian, young Romy knew that merely opening his mouth would expose him as an illegal refugee. He settled in a small town and enrolled at a local Jewish school where the headmaster was sympathetic to his plight. He continued his education until 1944, when Hungary formally joined the Axis, uniting with Nazi Germany, that country too began mass deportation of Jews. Romy returned home to Czechoslovakia, this time carrying forged Christian identification papers. Romy Cohen became an informal member of the underground, the resistance, and used his connections to help find housing for Jewish refugees and supply them with false but extremely realistic Christian identity papers, providing a refuge for refugees, giving them anonym anonymity and safety. Eventually, however, Cohen was arrested on suspicion of carrying false documents. After a daring escape, he fled to the mountains, and with that, a great turning point in Romy's life was at hand. He would soon join the armed Jewish freedom fighters, the partisans who frequently hid in the mountains. Day in, day out, the partisans fought the Germans, sabotaging their military operations and disrupting their supply lines. The partisans also liberated many Jews from the ghettos, thereby preventing their deportation to concentration camps. By the time Romy joined the partisans, the Germans were already in retreat. His brigade drove them further and further westward, all the while capturing and interrogating Nazi officers. When Hungary was liberated by the Allies, Cohen returned to Czechoslovakia. There, he later received a number of medals for his service with the resistance fighters. Those honors include the prestigious Silver Star of the International Partisans, an honor shared by very few others. After the war, Cohen immigrated to the United States, and since 1976, he and his wife have divided their time between Staten Island and Brooklyn. Romy Cohen's autobiography, the Youngest Partisan, A Young Boy Who Fought the Nazis, was published in 2002. Although Cohen was originally against the idea of such a book, believing it to be self-serving, the alarming rise of people, even nations around the world that deny the very occurrence of the Holocaust, provided motivation for Romy to share his story. And so, Romy Cohen, in recognition of your courage in standing tall against oppression and tyranny, we honor you here today as you honor us by your presence on this stage at Wagner College. I'm going to go off script here for a second. 
In Romy's book, something remarkable happens in the first chapter. And this is part of his life. After he got back to Bratislava, what was then Yugoslavia, uh, Czechoslovakia, he was hoping to search that he thought he knew his mother and sister was killed. He knew one sister was saved. He was searching for his father who was in a concentration camp. And he knew that there was a very slight chance his father would have survived. He used to go to the train station in Bratislava, a train station I have been to, and wait to see if any of the survivors coming back would be his father. Day after day after day after day, no, no father. So he had given up hope on this last day. And um, he was with a friend, and they saw this figure come off the train who was totally emaciated, the worst they'd ever seen. He said to his friend, we've seen survivors, but none looking this bad. And as they walked by that person, he heard his name called, and that person was his father. President Karachi, Dr. Karachi, Provost McNear, distinguished honorees, guests, faculty, and the class of 2016. May I begin by expressing my humble gratitude for the honor bestowed upon me. I am proud to stand in the ranks of the noble men and women who have been similarly honored for their effort to make the world a better place. I am also proud to stand in the ranks of the talented and accomplished men and women seated here today. Each ready to receive the degree and the recognition of the years of hard work and labor. You must not take for gratitude the opportunity to have received a quality education. Having spent my formative years in a generation, the society ravaged by turmoil and war, I was deprived of that formal, formal higher education. We limited to five classes, elementary. With this degree in my hand, having been embraced by the college, I feel as though a void in my life has been filled. I would like to reciprocate with an agenda. A world begun in a generation marked by prejudice, hate, squeezed by one man and the regime that has escalated the Holocaust and saw the inhalation of six million innocent souls. With the grace of God, I was fortunate to escape the angel of death many times, and I used my good fortune to save, defend the lives of others. As a survivor, I made my responsibility to keep the events of history alive in the minds of subsequent generations. Awareness of the evil of that time will show us the depth of moral weaknesses to which mankind can sink. But as the case passes, there are fewer and fewer survivors who keep memories of that area alive. but they must be kept alive so that you and your children and your grandchildren
can thrive in a world of peace and harmony. To that end, I invite you into my world with a mandate, a mandate that has taken root to the efforts of visionaries such as Wagner College Professor Laurie Weinstock and the members of the Board of City of Society. I refer to the establishment of the Holocaust Center and Wagner College Campus, whose stated mission to inform, inspire, awake future generations to the unification of anti racism. I am warm and encouraged by this project. I'm proud to be affiliated with such a sincere and realistic faculty. And I urge each and every member of the Wagner College community, students, alumni, to facilitate the city in this endeavor. I use to use education training response to allocate prejudices on hate, learn from the past, and keep the memory alive. And by so doing, we will be the strong foundation of a better future. Thank you, thank you. May from be stressed to stand, and God all bless you. With the authority invested in me by the Board of Trustees of Wagner College and the laws of the State of New York, I hereby confer upon you, Romy Cohen, the degree of honor, a Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, and thereby declare that your name forever be inscribed in the role of Wagner College's most esteemed alumni. Congratulations. Thank you.